Good morning, saints. Welcome to our sanctuary. It's a beautiful day out there. It is Mother's Day. It's a little chillier than it should be for this time of year. But even though this isn't a church day per se, it's a secular celebration day, it is a special day. And I want to wish you all a very happy Mother's Day. Of course, all the mothers deserve this wish, but so do all women. Actually, quite a few men, nearly every woman has mothered someone in their lives. Maybe your own children, it may be your students, your nieces, your nephews, your neighbor children. In time, it may be your own parents. Mothering is an act of compassion and giving and loving and keeping and teaching and sharing and guiding that goes beyond the normal interactions. It requires pushing a big piece of your own life aside to make room for someone else's life. It's truly sacrificial. And if you know anyone who has been a mother to you, make sure you let them know today how much you appreciate them. And Harry and I certainly do appreciate all of you, and we both wish you all, all you fine mothers and grandmothers and helpers, a wonderful, happy, joyous Mother's Day. Day, Pastor. Thank you. You're not my mother, but you're other people's mother. I am. And you did a good job Thanks. raising those girls. I sure do. Proud love of you. I sure do love those girls. Yes, indeed. I'm proud of them, I'll tell you. Are we ready to sing our first hymn? I believe we are ready because this is a beautiful day because the morning has come up without, at least in Sandy Land, no snow. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Might be snow where you're at, but it's really beautiful there if you don't have to actually step out in it. Well, actually, the, it's nice out here. The sun yeah, is the, shining. The sun is shining, and the flowers that are blooming, the ones that haven't been nipped, mm -hmm. we've been covering ours because they're under threat of freezing in May, mm. which is not right. <laughs> Unbelievable. Supposed to go back down in the 30s at least two more nights. Yeah. Oh. We don't like it here. Don't like that. Nope. But we accept it. Yes. Morning has broken. Morning has broken. Hallelujah. Like the first morning.
beautiful song. Oh, it's one of my favorites. Now, there's going to be a lot of people from my generation that first heard that song, not in church, mm -hmm. but by Cat Stevens. There you go. Yeah. I fell in love with it then. I was surprised to find it in church. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's surprising what we find in church. Isn't that the truth? Mm -hmm. I believe that would preach someday. Well, you know, the fact is we're not perfect, no, but we're forgiven. Boy. Yes, we are. Hallelujah to and the Lord. God's continuing to work on us. Yes, he is. And he's got a lot of time. I'm only 36 now. I know that. That just doesn't sound right, does it? Well, you, math was never your strong point. It still isn't, no. no. We ready for next hymn? Are you going to preach ready. now? Or what? Let's do this. Let's praise the Lord. Let's bring ourselves into a place of praise and worship. All right. And then we'll have a time for the word. How great thou art. <clears throat>
so popular? Who's that? Well, the Lord first. Yes. George Beverly Shea. Ah. Oh, and you know what's interesting about that? that? His mother called him and said, George, there's a song you need to start singing. Ah. Uh, and he went over and picked up the song from her. And I think it was something like 25 or 26 weeks straight. He sang it every night at the Billy Graham Crusades. Oh, my. Mothers always know best. Sometimes our wives do, too. Sometimes, oh, good save there. Good save. Well, you know what's great? I know that when you say something, it's right. Of course it is. Whether I'm compliant or not, <laughs> I think I've said enough. Mm -hmm. Oh, my. Well, let's see if we can get... Uh, Get a word up here. Um, we got a new, a new table. It's not quite what we had before. So he's 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 adjusting me because sometimes people say, "Well, I can't hear everything." I'm normally pretty loud. I'm normally able to project, but the phones are kind of different than the mics, and and uh, so we're trying to adjust so everybody can hear everything. Can I have that? Your servant? Yeah. No, not the whole, the whole shebang. Oh, the I whole mean. shebang. Oh, I didn't know you put this. Oh. Yeah, I told you you're going to have to be careful, baby. I'm being careful. Uh -huh. Okay, see, I, I had to be creative. Because, see, he had, this is a beautiful stool. This stool is an antique, and it's gorgeous, and it's marvelous, and it's the wrong height. <laughs> Do you want me to raise it for you? No, not now. You want me to lower it for you? No. You know, sometimes I don't hear you. And I, it's my hearing aids. I know. <laughs> you just go with that, sweetheart. I'm just, I'm, I'm going to ruin the whole day, aren't I? No. Uh, you never ruin the day for me, baby. Well, thank you. All right. Uh, we have a word from Matthew 15, 21 through 28. And this is a story that's one of my favorite stories. My glasses are steaming. I'm not sure why. It's not hot in here, but it's, it's. We're hot. Uh, it's uh, the story of the Syrophoenician woman. And I'm taking it from the New Century Version this morning. And the Word of God says that Jesus left that place and went to the area of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that area came to Jesus and cried out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter has a demon and she is suffering very much. But Jesus did not answer the woman. So his followers came to Jesus and begged him, tell the woman to go away. She is following us and shouting. Jesus answered, God sent me only to the lost sheep, the people of Israel. Then the woman came to Jesus again and bowed before him and said, Lord, help me. Jesus answered, it is not right to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. The woman said, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus answered, woman, you have great faith. I will do what you asked. And at that moment, the woman's daughter was healed. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. I'm looking for more water. If you can find it, that'd be great. It's back here somewhere. Pick it up. Ah, thank you. Now, as I said, it's always been one of my favorite stories because this is a woman on a mission, a mother on a mission, and isn't that perfect for Mother's Day? We know from the same account from Mark that this woman was a Greek from Phoenicia in Syria. And they add those details because Mark needed to clarify something in the story. He needed to tell the listener, here comes a total outsider. Someone that has no claim on the time or the talents of the master. Now, I got to tell you, when you're an outsider yourself, it's good to hear that there's a Savior for you, too. 
Jesus and the disciples were entire to get away. They were there to hide out. They needed a little R&R. &R. It's time for a rest. Even Jesus needs vacation sometime. And neither account explains how this woman knows Jesus is there, let alone how she has come by her understanding of who he is. But clearly, she is on a mission, and when a woman's on a mission, that makes her a force to be reckoned with. And because it involves her child, nothing is going to stop her. And although we only get to meet this Canaanite woman briefly here in the scriptures, it's easy to see she's a woman of wit, quick in her mind. She's got wisdom, capable of humility, meekness, patience, and great perseverance. She's stubborn. And you know what? Most good mothers are stubborn. They have to be. If they don't start out that way, surely they're going to find out that they need to be that way sooner or later. And when you read about this woman, one of the first things that you need to realize, you are reading about a God chaser. This is a woman who's seeking, and her seeking had brought her to an understanding of who this Jesus was that went beyond what others, even some of the disciples at this point, were able to fully grasp. And she has come to this place, and she's been humbling herself. You see, she's hungry enough to chase after what she is sure is the only real answer. She had an acceptance that Jesus has the ability to do what she needs because she had determined in herself that this Jesus was the Messiah. And we know that because of the way that she cried out to him, Lord, son of David. She's acknowledging him as the promised one from the line of David, the Messiah, the coming king, and she's approaching him with a faith that, is a model for us even now as Christians to emulate. A faith that trusts, a faith that hungers, a faith that cries out, a faith that seeks, a faith that perseveres, a faith that ignores what the world has told her is her reality. And this woman understands her position. She understands that she's asking for a big thing and, and somehow she knows, just absolutely knows that Jesus is powerful enough to provide the big thing with a small thing. And she understands that she isn't worthy of such a blessing, but she doesn't plead merit. Instead, she depends on mercy. She understands mercy because she understands love. She knows. She knows that mother's love, that compassionate, all-giving, sacrificial love. She knows love in, in a way that pushes you beyond your, beyond your own comfort zone, a love that will bend the knee to a humble place, that will bury pride. That love that takes the first rebuke and the next and, and the next and keeps on prevailing and returning until she gets her crown. She's not going to go home, you see, without that crown, without that miracle, without that answer. It's just not an option for her. And because she understands mercy, she has tenacity. She knows that love requires staying the course. And she takes the rebuke. He didn't speak to her when she cried out. But she didn't turn aside. And she takes the next rebuke. The disciples say, send her away. They're complaining about her. She doesn't turn aside. She takes the final rebuke 
from the master himself, and still she doesn't turn aside. Instead, when she has attained the master's ear, she presses in, she presents her case, she lays out her need, and she trusts, and in that trust, she is able to lift up faith as an offering. Ah, saints, that is an offering that is irresistible to Jesus. Oh Lord, I know about the bread. I know I'm not one of the children. But Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall under the master's table. This extraordinary woman has grasped an awareness of the infinite plenty and knows the crumbs would be available from this bounty and that even those crumbs would be enough. We see here a marvelous humility coupled with a desperate need that made her glad of crumbs, hungry for crumbs, anything that tumbled from the table of the Lord. It didn't matter how small, how insignificant it appeared to anyone else, it would be enough. Oh, saints, we serve a God who is more than enough. We serve a God that is so much that if all he gave us were crumbs, just a few tumbling crumbs, it would be enough. But we don't need to wait for crumbs. We have a seat at the table. We have an invitation to the meal. We have a ticket that has reserved our spot. But do we have the faith of this Syrophoenician woman? Can we take what seems like a rebuke and still pray on? Can we take what sounds like a no and still stay the course? Can we hear the truth of our own unworthiness and still rest our case on the one who is worthy? You see, her humility allowed her to expect these crumbs and yet take them with confidence, knowing that it would be enough, that the provision would be complete, even when it may have been seen by the words by the world's eyes as far too little may have been seen by the world as disparaging she didn't take offense instead she bowed lower she waited she challenged she asked she persevered and above all she humbled herself to the authority Jesus represented about us? Are we seeing the provision in the crumbs? Are we seeing the miracles in the insignificant things? Are we rejoicing in the less spectacular gifts that God grants us and showers us with each and every day? And are we willing to look for the lessons in the rebuke, the reprimand, the reproach? Look at this woman again. In the rebuke, the word says, her faith was refined. In a reprimand, we can tell right then she received mercy. In the reproach, Right in the reproach, she received her miracle. In her answer from the master, the disciples learn seekers are going to come. God chasers are going to come from every end of the earth. And that Jesus will deem them worthy. That they will also be given a place at the table and given all they need. Nobody has to settle for tumbling crumbs in God's kingdom. Because there is no shortage. There's only surplus. This mother didn't go home 
until all of her desires were fulfilled. All that she asked, she received. And more than that, for she had encountered the King of Kings. Oh, that we may, at this very moment, at this very hour, have a personal encounter with the Lord of Lords and partake of what he's offering each of us today. His truth, his strength, his mercy, and his salvation. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I love the word. I love the word. I love to dig into it and study it. I hope you go back and read whatever version you have. Ask questions of it. You can always challenge the word of God. It is not afraid of hard questions. Mm -hmm. And it always has better answers than you thought you'd get. Surprising ones sometimes. One of the things that touched me when you were talking about whenever she talked to Jesus, mm -hmm. she didn't call him master, which would be like rabbi. Right. She called him Lord. Called him Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. Powerful anointing today. Majesty, worship his majesty. We might worship like she did. Hallelujah. Sing along, sing. Sing along.
in request for the old rugged cross as our next hymn you can get in touch with us if you have any songs you'd like us to try and if we're able to do it we'll do the very best we can <laughs>
will you pray us out? Pray you out? Yes. I'll pray you through. Pray us through, baby. <laughs> Let's pray. And I will pray with you. Right All behind right. you. Lord, we stand in a gap. Today. I thank you Dear Jesus, for your touch today. Oh, Lord, we lift up your I'm reminded in your word where there was a woman who said, if I can just touch the hem of his oh, garment, Lord, yes, I know Jesus. I'll be whole. And when she touched oh. your robe, Jesus, you said, I perceive that virtue has flown out of my body. Somebody touched me. Oh, Lord, we want to touch you for people today. Yes, Lord. We Jesus. want to reach out, oh God, to ask for your mercy and your grace to touch lives. Oh God. Lord, that we might be able to feast even from the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Minister, oh God, today to your people. Yes, Lord. Jesus. I know, Lord, that while the word was going forth, the anointing was going forth and people's lives sure were being it. touched not because of Harry or Sandy no, but because of the King of Kings oh, my Lord. Oh, and the so Lord of Lords dear Jesus. Lord touch you. those who may not know you yes, Jesus. none of us are worthy oh, but Lord. you have made us worthy dear Jesus thank you Lord because it was your blood yes dear that dropped at Golgotha's brow. It was your body that was broken for us. It was your body that received the stripes. And we're healed by those stripes. Yes, sir. We're saved by your blood. Minister to your people today, and Lord, as all now to give you the praise and the glory. We honor you. And I pray now, Lord, that you bless your people. Yes, Jesus. Be blessed, dear saints, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> you saints have a beautiful wonderful sabbath we send our blessings out to you and we'll see you tuesday night at 7 30 if you need anything or you know somebody that needs anything contact us give us a call get hold of us we love you saints